the amount of ego you have to deal with. Oh, that could be me. Like, yeah. I could be that cool girl on a bike. I never in a million years thought, like, I'm going to ride a bike. We're here in London, a place full of people from all kinds of places. But when I cycle into work and I look around, I rarely see people who look like me. Does cycling as a sport embrace the black community or is it excluding a huge demographic of people? And are people doing anything to change that? I want to find out. Let's make it make sense. Alpha says we've got three hours of filming, so let's use all of that up today. We're here in Elephant and Castle and we're actually at a Santander cycle point. This is one of 750 that are in London. It's basically a bike hire system and they are used a lot by Londoners. I want to make my way more into central London, so I need to go north. I want to use a bike, so let's go get one. So use my money. I've got multiple helmets, like just in case. Safety first. Tap my cards. One, two, three. Three, two, three. Owning a bike is great, but it's quite a big commitment if you don't consider yourself a cyclist yet. So we are going to take it easy today, pick up and put down the bikes when we fancy and get into the story. This is a whole gym training. London, let's go! It's early. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so sometimes you get stuck in like bike traffic and you'll be there and there'll be like 20 other cyclists around you. And you do just like look around and I'm just nosy. So I'm like looking at people's outfits and thinking about where people are going. And you definitely feel like you're in a sea of white men. There you go, that's life. It's an alpha. <laughs> there he is. Uh -huh. Doing nothing. Doing nothing. This isn't just about my thoughts, my feelings, and what I see when I'm out on the roads in London. With girls, we've got Anna Marie. I set up a little call with some of my friends to see what their thoughts were. Hiya. But then I think once I hit a certain point in my teenage years, I just didn't have the need to cycle. I kind of felt like cycling was unsafe because there was a period of time where lots of people in near where I live, I live in Hackney, who, who passed away from, you know, road yeah. accidents. There's just a lot happening, like even yeah. if it's pedestrians or cars, buses. I used to cycle um, quite a bit when I was younger, but never on main roads. It's always just been in like little back roads. I never really got the big um, like road safety training that you used to have in primary school and secondary schools. I did have my bike stolen when I was 17 and I've never gotten one since I've seen groups like Black Girls Hike and, and Girl Dreamer, both organisations that look to get women of colour or black women into um, adventure sports. Like Renee was saying, kind of being able to learn about safety in, a, in an environment where you feel welcome and you're surrounded by people like you. Most of the time when I see cyclists, they're not really female. They're usually male and white. And when I do see enough black women cycling, because I've been thinking about cycling myself, I'm like, oh, that could be me. Like, yeah. I could be that cool girl on a bike. Even like jogging, things like jogging, when you, when you see women that look like you, doing regular things it, it feels good it feels empowering it feels like, okay i can do that too I came away from that call feeling really optimistic. I think with the right guidance, all three of those girls could happily make cycling part of their routine. Yeah. This is like Inception. If this is how cute you look if you wear your hoodie under your helmet. Time to speak to someone who really knows their stuff about cycling, the structures within it, and how we go about changing it in the future. I came across Dr. Marlon Lee Moncrief, and we went to West Sussex, where he lives. A bit more space and greenery than London. I've definitely asked the question, why is there not many black people that cycle? But I have realised there are plenty of black people who cycle, mm. but you talk about there's a kind of Eurocentric view to cycling in this country. If we're yeah. looking at the Tour de France or we're looking at World Championships or the Olympics, yeah. we're kind of looking at it from this lens. When I started, I'm gonna talk about when I started racing, it was sort of racing back in the 1990s. Mm. I couldn't think of one black led group or black led team. The, the UK are way behind the USA in terms of its history. The USA has a history, a, a deep history of, of grassroots, um, cycling led by black groups and that's because of the Jim Crow laws where you know se segregation where black people wanted to ride you know freely uh, along with white people but there were, there were Jim Crow laws that stopped them from doing that. 
And also what, what the USA have as well, which um, I need to mention, is that they have someone called Major Taylor. Mm -hmm. and Major Taylor was the original um, black world champion in cycling in 1899. And the UK doesn't have a, a, a Major Taylor. He won the world champs in 1899, he won two of them. Mm. And because of the, of the Jim Crow laws in the USA where he was from, he was restricted from racing in certain states. So that, that kind of sort of quelled his own sort of ambitions in, in some respects. So he had to, he had to sort of um, race abroad uh, across Europe. And, and that's what made his name. Even just uh, like, England and the UK having a stronger presence in cycling in that, at that top level, you think it like filters down to everyone? If there's an icon that, um, that looks like you, mm. I think it, it can have a tremendous effect. I think uh, I've, I've, I've used the um, analogy with athletics as yeah. well. So, you know, Jessica Ennis yeah. and Daley Thompson back, you know, back in the day, Tessa Sanderson. Do you think representation at that very top level does trickle down to even people using their bikes to go around the park or to get to work each day. It's a, yeah, totally it does. I think if, if, if the country produces a superstar, a black female super, superstar, that's going to trickle down to the bicycle shops as well. There isn't a conveyor belt of, of, of black female British yeah. cyclists. That, that needs to start, really. Do you feel like cycling is a racist sport? There is racism in cycling, um, conscious and unconscious racism in cycling. And it's more to do with power and ownership of of resources. Yeah. I think the Ride London event was um, was one of the best things that came out of the Olympics. I saw I saw black and black and white people, young and old people on that ride. For black women specifically, can you see something that might be a real kind of leap onto that next bit to get more black women cycling? I think celebrities do help. Yeah. Uh, celebrities do get into the consciousness of people. If you're a celebrity and if you're a black woman, if, if you're a female, you like riding your bicycles, get involved with the black grassroots clubs mm. and endorse them and be, become their ambassadors. Because if you seem to be doing that, then that might get the person that likes you for your acting or for your singing yeah. doing cycling. Yeah. So it's about connecting up the different forces really to, to get people involved in it. Lockdown restrictions in 2020 were a huge catalyst for people jumping on a bike for the first time in years. Mona is one of those people and now she's involved with Black Unity Bike Ride. How did Black Unity start? How did it all come about? Black Unity Bike Ride was um, put together by um, a group of cyclists, a black group of cyclists. Yeah. Um, Team Origin was one of them, the main one I guess. Um, they decided to meet together in response to the murder of Floyd. Um, in 2020 and it was just an idea um, they thought maybe a hundred people 150 people would turn up and and this was an it, idea of a group cycle along around London yes yeah um, and just to celebrate being who they are on bikes yeah. this year we're very planned yeah which has also proven to be a bit more difficult than we initially anticipated there's a lot of there's a lot of things we had to maneuver around and a lot of restrictions yeah. um, and also a lot of prejudice yeah. from certain councils. Simple things like just trying to get approval for using a park. And it's, it's things that we're being asked that we're aware that most likely other groups are not being asked. And it's just showing that the more we're trying to follow along with the protocol, it's, yeah. there's a lot of things in place that are hindering people of colour mm. from doing what they want to do in parks. Yeah. And the thing is, when asked how much these people have looked into who we are and what we do, yeah. they haven't. And they actually have said mm. we haven't we really know. looked into it. Do you feel like, I know it's a bit of a cliche of like, oh, it's opened new doors for me, but that's how I felt when I started cycling, was like, oh, it's like another world, because you're seeing things from a different angle. I was meant to go back to work, so I used to be a nurse. But then when I got into the cycling, and we were still in lockdown, I was like, I'm so grateful that I didn't I go back to back. work. I started this whole thing. I didn't think that this was going to become a, yeah, become a job. Is. It's been very empowering riding with a lot of black women mm -hmm. and men as well. Yeah. Um, but we've literally formed a community, which is what the intention behind Black Unity Bike Ride was, yeah. typically. And being on the road as a black woman, and you get to the lights, the amount of ego you have to deal with, yeah. with men trying to, I'm not racing you, mate. I'm, I'm just trying to go to work. <laughs> and it's like, you know, you, you're on the bike and you pass them and then you literally, you see them and it's like, oh. And, they, and you're yeah. thinking, oh, you're having a laugh. Yeah. And the amount of times I've had to stop myself and just be like, don't be in your feels, just yeah. let him go, just leave it. 
I feel like when I'm on the bike, I'm just exploring myself and nature and just being at one with, with the world. In London, a city where a third of the population identifies as Black, Asian and minority ethnic, 94% of female cyclists are white. I sat down with Transport for London to ask how they're going about changing things. We know that for too long cycling has not been representative. I think one of the really key things that we've seen is the success of the Santander Cycle Hire Scheme. So I think continuing to make sure that we have that really kind of successful Cycle Hire Scheme is going to be a big part of it. I met two women who were part of TFL's campaign to get more black women cycling. Mm. Anita, Charlie, it's so nice to meet you. I've just nice worked you into be my friends. <laughs> Um, you know, before before um, I received this campaign, I never in a million years thought like I'm gonna ride a bike. Never even crossed my mind because growing up, uh, we didn't have any bike around. Um, I grew up in Ethiopia in a village, so for me, like bike was not even around at all. I didn't even think about it. Like it just didn't cross my mind. No. Yeah. Yeah, so this was like uh, such an amazing opportunity and I said when I saw the email, I'm like, it's now or never. I'm glad you did. What about Me yourself? Too. Yeah, like there barriers. was. There's quite a few um, barriers, like, you know, my weight, my mobility and also I'm an asthmatic as well. So it's the, and the confidence. It was like there were times leading up to it. It was like a few weeks before. It's like, uh, what if I fall off and hurt myself on the road? What if this? And mm. but I thought, no, you've had the training. You know about the, oh, you know the technical things, what to do. And yeah, so it's also having that breaking that barrier, and more of us need to be out there doing it. Yeah because it was like my first time actually going on the road mm. um, and with the bike, so I was shaking. And for some reason, I don't know how, I ended up being the first person. Yeah, like, I think why? 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 How did that happen? Oh, yeah. I can see it in all of those pictures. It was just you at the front. I was like, oh, I know. confident. I was like, <laughs> no, really. I was there like by accident. Yeah. <laughs> I saw London, how I've never seen London before and I mean I was born in the East End yeah. so to see London that way I was like wow is this really here and to hear the different sounds and the noise it was like wow this is my London. Mm, yeah. <laughs> right Alpha I'm gonna have proper helmet hair when I take this off but Bear with me, we have reached the end of the video. We made it! And I have learned so much along this process. I've been taking notes, so I'm just gonna share my final thoughts when asking, where are all the black women on bikes? First of all, it doesn't surprise me that black communities have been and continue to be excluded from certain sports, especially when they're a little bit more costly. Throughout this process, people have been recommending me and pointing me in the direction of different collectives, cycling groups, specifically for black people, like Black Unity Bike Ride. And whilst I see so much value in them and I totally think there's a huge need for them, I don't think it should stop there. For a sport that is so mainstream for a certain demographic, I feel like we need to break out of these groups sometimes. And I know that this isn't everyone's priority, but for me, since cycling more as an adult, it has changed my life hugely for the better. And that feeling that I get on a bike, I just want to share it with everybody. So whether you're a black woman or not, if you love cycling, I think we all have a little part to play in opening up the doors to a club that feels like not everyone's invited to. That's a wrap up, but we did it! Yeah, <laughs> did it. Slashed it, babes. <laughs>